One of the secrets of not being so nervous up here is I look above the heads and I don't notice some people in here. And uh, I say that I, I didn't mean to overlook, but uh, Miss Lauren is here and I believe this is the first time that Baby Liam's first service uh, here in church. And we're grateful to have Baby Liam here. The last couple of weeks, we're talking about Jesus, and he refers himself to be the light, which he is. And we need to watch those that are Christians for the second coming of the Lord. And that word watch, uh, we've studied, and it, it means to become light, to share the light, or get out of the way. And as I was studying this week, Jesus puts an emphasis to his disciples, you need to be concerned, I'm coming back soon. And I thought about this, and I thought, my goodness, if he put an emphasis on them, how much more should we be concerned? We are closer than they ever were. We ought to be even more concerned about getting the gospel out. And if you have your Bibles, I invite you to stand to read these two verses. Verses 42 through 44. Jesus explains to the disciples, you ought to be concerned. Don't worry about the hour. Worry about the souls. Time is going to come off the clock quickly. And therefore, we only have a limited time to get the word of God out. In verse 42, watch, therefore, for ye know what hour the Lord doth come. Ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Lord, we're so grateful that you would even come and to leave heaven to die on the cross for even me. Lord, as Brandon said about the light this morning, our light needs to shine more than ever. At no hour hour than this. In our own homes, in our nation, in our churches. If someone has never received your light, may it be this morning in Christ's name. Amen. Are you connected to the light? Fawn and I just had a quick getaway. We just got away this for a night this last week. And I haven't heard this in a long time, but the clerk automatically saw the last name and says, are, are you connected to the Sears? And I thought to myself, well, I am connected to the family. I'm, my last name is Sears, but I'm not connected to the store. Uh, even greater than this, I'm connected to Moses Sears. <laughs> so, yes, I am connected, but to my family. And I'm proud of that. As a Christian, you ought to be proud that you're connected to Christ. If you're saved. And Jesus is going to give them a test, if you will. This is the evidence if you are connected to the light. More than ever, you ought to become light, share light, or get out of the way. Don't worry about the hour because no man knoweth the hour. Some of us, even Christians, we get hung up on the hour and don't even realize that time is ticking by. What we need to be concerned about is the light. Are we connected? Are we sharing it? Are we in the way of it? In this verse, watch, therefore, for ye know now what hour the Lord doth come. He's saying, watch, become light, share light, or get out of the way of the light. And then he goes into, but know this. What he's saying is, if you want to know if you're connected to the light, this is going to be evident in your life. And he uses the word good man here. But know this, 
that the good man of the house had known and what watched the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. And what he's doing here, and I'm going to get on the minute a little bit, but God is going to hold man responsible. If you're a husband or a father, God has given you a responsibility to become light and share the light. If not, your home will be broken up. And God is telling us this. And he's telling the disciples who are men that you are responsible for this light. You're responsible for it to shine. You're responsible for it to share, and you're responsible, if you're not going to do anything, get out of the way so the light can shine. And if you're a good man, if you are saved and you have the light, Jesus is saying you will have the evidence of what I'm about to say. But know this. Know what? Know where the source is. That Jesus is the light. And by the way, being connected to the light means being connected to his word. Are you connected to his word? Do you understand his word? Is the word in the house being exposed? Is it being taught? Is it being shared? Being connected to the light means being connected to the word. The word is Jesus. Therefore, when we talk about the word of God, we're talking about Jesus. If you're connected to Jesus, you're connected to the Word of God. Therefore, the Word of God would be important to you. Are you connected to the light? Am I connected? There is a light. Jesus is that light. The Word of God is the light of Christ. Are you connected to the light? There is some evidence that would be true in your life if you are. That if the good man, what is a good man? And notice the word he says, if the good man. Are you connected to light or not? How do you become a good man? The Bible says that. What it means is you should be concerned about if you have light. Jesus tells the disciples, I am the light of the world. The light is coming. And the light is going to overcome darkness. And by the way, and I don't know why we only sing it on uh, Christmas time, but Christmas carols, if you ever heard the Christmas carol, uh, the first Noel, I've said it to this, this church before, I am a person that what I preach, I want to know what I'm preaching. I'm at the point where I want to know what I'm singing. That's why I can explain it to someone. And I never knew what the first Noel meant or Noel, what it means. Very quickly, does anybody know what Noel means? Noel means the light that overcame darkness. Jesus is the light that overcame darkness. And those that are in the light will be with the light. And those that are in the darkness, when the light is exposed, will be destroyed in eternal darkness. So are you part of the light? Are you connected to the light? Have you become light? And those that are light, you would be concerned about sharing that light. The first question is, are you connected to the light of Jesus? If you're a good man, you would be concerned about your own soul. You'd be concerned about the souls of your home. The biggest concern is, am I personally part of the light? Is the light being shown? In the light of my home is the light coming in. Uh, on Sunday mornings, we open the blinds for the light to come in. We like light. 
And light exposes things. Some people don't like light. The darkness doesn't like the light. So if you are connected with light, Jesus is going to explain what it means to be part of light. And if you're not part of this, you're not part of the light. So he'll explain the evidence. Are you a Christian? And if you're a Christian, if you have the light of Jesus, this would be evident in your life. Jesus begins to explain how you know if you have the light in your life. Do you have the light in your life? If you do, there would be evidence that you are connected with the light. There would be some light being shown through you. You would be connected. Well, connected, first of all, means a covenant. That you have made a covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ. And the only reason you can become part of the covenant is through the blood. So first and foremost, in your life, have you received the blood of Christ? Only the blood of Christ can connect you to light. That's first and foremost. If you are part of the light, if you have light in your life, you know about the blood of Jesus. You are one that has received it. You have confessed that you have sin in your life and that only the blood can wash it. That is the evidence of having light in your life. Was there ever a moment in your life that you have received the blood of Jesus. The last Sunday night we did the Lord's Supper and some things dawned on me as we were doing it. And I was explaining to the church uh, when we were passing out the cup. The Lord says, the fruit of the vine. And I never was taught this. It was just something that God was showing me that very night that through his blood, we can become part of of his fruit. So many people get hung up on the physical part. Man, I even heard Baptists complain, what is in the cup? And you're missing the whole point. The point is, because of the blood of Jesus, you can become fruit of the vine. Jesus is the vine. And what he was showing the disciple is because of this blood, because of what is being shared, you can be part of my fruit, the fruit of the vine. Are you in a covenant with Christ? Covenant is a fancy word of saying that you have been saved. You've accepted Christ. Uh, we try to put things in simple terms. God has put things in very, very uh, simple terms. I remember going to college for the very first time. It wasn't seminary. And my very first class, my very first time, I'll never forget this, uh, the teacher, and I didn't, man, I was like, man, he knows that. This is my first day. But anyways, he goes, if you wanted people to know that you're in college, you would use the word antithesis. Antithesis is the fancy word of saying my opinion. I have an opinion. I'm smart. I have an opinion. No, you would smart if you know the word of God. And God doesn't complicate things. Those that receive my blood, those who accept my Savior, God the Son, those that repent that I am a sinner will be with Christ. And we're going to see this in Genesis. If you want to turn to Genesis chapter 6, we're going to be there in just a moment, because even in this chapter, in chapter 24, Jesus brings up Noah. And there's no coincidence why Jesus brings up the times of Noah. When I return, it's going to be the times of Noah. There's a lot of things that we're going to see in Noah's time and uh, up into the flood, very similar, similar to what's happening today. And Jesus compares that with the disciples. If you are in a covenant with Christ, you are part of the light. You have light in your life. The very first time you see the word covenant is in Genesis chapter 6. You see a covenant with Noah. 
Again, there's no coincidence why Jesus brings up Noah in chapter 24 in this Matthew chapter 24. And covenant means bring together into a contract so that a real notional link is established. If you want to be part of the light, you must be linked up to the light. A covenant must be established for you to be part of this light. Was there ever a time that you have entered into a covenant with God? And we know today in the New Testament, you can only be in a covenant with God through his son, Jesus. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 17 and 18, this is where the first time you see the word covenant. And Noah was saved because he was in a covenant with God. Here in chapter 6, in Genesis chapter 6, verse 17, And behold, even I do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh. Now, before we go even further, Jesus in Matthew here has just explained when the light returns, when I return, I'm going to destroy what's left on the earth. The earth is going to go through such a tribulation period that's never seen before. And those that have not received the light will go through this. So here, God is telling the same thing with Noah. I'm destroying the earth. The light is about to enter the earth. And when it does, I'm going to destroy but what he's saying, the world, he's saying darkness. Light will always destroy darkness. And if you've never received light, and if you're in a dark world and you've never received Christ, you're in darkness, you will be in darkness for all eternity. So here we see, and behold, I even do I bring, I do bring a flood of waters upon the earth. Why? To destroy all flesh. Wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. Jesus told the disciples, when I return, if you're not part of my light, everything else is going to go through a tribulation period. Everyone else is going to experience something that they've never experienced before. And it's great tribulation. In verse 18, but with thee... Will I establish my covenant? And thou shalt come into the ark. The word ark means covenant. It means salvation. Thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. Does that sound very similar to what Jesus is telling the disciples? He's telling the disciples this very same thing. And Christ is warning them that this is going to happen. God is warning Noah, this is going to happen. And behold, in Genesis chapter 6, verse 17, behold. This is very interesting right here. This word, uh, behold, and before I get to this, is so much here. And behold, what he's saying is, my word is true. Jesus is telling us and the disciples the same thing. My word is true. It's going to come to pass. The light will return. And those that have the light, I will receive them. But those that don't have it, are going to be left behind. God is telling the same thing to Noah. My word is true. My word will come to pass. And the world will see. When he says the word behold here to Noah, God is telling Noah, you will see, the world will see this. We said this a little bit in Sunday school class. Do you understand that every day, everybody one day is going to see light? But those that are in darkness will remain in darkness when they see the light. And those that are in the light will stay in the light. But those that are in darkness will see eternal darkness. My word is true. It's going to happen. Do we really get this? Does it resonate with us? What Jesus is saying. What the word of God is saying. 
and behold. And Jesus is saying the same thing to the disciples. It's going to happen. Do we really, even as Christians, do we digest the seriousness, the emphasis that Christ puts on when he returns? What is going to transpire? The world is going to experience what my light will do. That's what God is telling Noah, and that's what Jesus is telling the disciples. This world is going to see what my light is capable of. It's going to see and experience what my light can do. And by the way, those that have lights, you're also going to experience what light can do. Light reveals things. Light blesses. It lights up the path. You don't live in darkness. So either way, the light is going, the people are going to experience it. Even those that have light, you're going to experience what light can do. And praise God for that. The light will experience the power of light. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 17, And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth. And what Jesus is telling the disciples, I am going to return. To destroy, well, to destroy all flesh, wherein all Wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. Jesus tells us that he's returning. And he's warning the disciples. If you care about someone, you're going to let them know. If you really love someone, if you genuinely care for others, you would share this message. You would tell them about me. Going back to Matthew 24 and 21. And again, the ark is the covenant. And notice this. And I was sharing with Sunday school class. God was revealing things to me even this morning about Noah's ark. God says to Noah that I will establish my covenant. What he's saying to Noah is that I'm going to raise you out of the darkness. When these floods happen, I'm going to raise you. And Jesus is telling the same thing to his disciples. I'm going to raise you up. Those that are dead in Christ shall rise. Those that remain, that's in the lights, you will be caught up in the air when the light returns. And God is telling Noah in chapter uh, 6, verses 17 18, he's saying, by the way, God, uh, by the way, Noah, I established my covenant with you. What he's saying to Noah is, when this happens, when I uh, have the floods come down, I'm going to raise you up. And now remember, the ark means salvation. What did the boat do when the rains came? It raised up. While everything underneath it was destroyed. Those in the ark, those in salvation, those that trusted God and his word was lifted up out of the darkness. Lifted up while everything else was being destroyed. Do you see the picture? Do you see what salvation does? Are you part of this light? And again, there's no coincidence that Jesus is comparing Noah's day and what happened and what's going to happen when he returns. What he's telling them is those that are saved, those that have salvation, the ark represents, when you study it, it means a covenant. Those that are in a covenant with God. And again, you can only enter a covenant through Jesus. And those that have obtained salvation, when Jesus returns, will be raised up. Well, everything else will be destroyed. God shows us a picture of this with Noah. That Noah trusted his word. But when God said that I'm going to do this, Noah trusted it. And because he did, he entered into a covenant with God. And because he was in the covenant with God, when the earth was being destroyed, Noah was raised up. The same thing happens to us when we obtain salvation. 
in Matthew 24, 21, for then shall be great tribulation, such as what not, was not seen since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. This same thing with Noah. It has never rained since then. The earth is going to see something it's never seen before. But those that are saved is going to be raised up out of it. The same thing Jesus is telling them, that when I return, there's going to be a great tribulation. But those that have light will be raised up out of that darkness. They will be saved. And do you see the parallelism? For then shall be great tribulation such as not seen since the beginning of the road to this time no shall ever be. And by the way, God said, and Hollywood always gets it wrong, What did God tell Noah? I'm going to destroy the earth with water and it's never going to happen again. Jesus is saying the same thing here. He said, I'm going to return and this is my return. I'm not returning again. I'm coming for my people for the tribulation period and that's the only time I'm coming. Some people think they can talk their way out of things. And Jesus is saying, by the way, when this happens... It's not going to happen again. For those that are lost and never received Christ, you will be here during that time. As a matter of fact, in God's word, uh, when it talks about the souls under the altar, those are talking about the souls that are saved, that there are going to be people that are going to be saved during the tribulation period, but they will be left behind when he returns. Now, they will be in the millennial period with Christ, but they're not going to be caught up in the air with Christ. And then Genesis, back, in Genesis, back to Genesis chapter 6, verse 18. I know there's a lot of information, but this is what God is telling us. But with thee, God is telling Noah, with, uh, when this happens, you will be raised up. In the Greek, when it says, I'm going to be with thee, with thee, he's saying, you're going to be raised up with me. You're going to be raised up. And those that are saved, now, when Jesus returns, you're going to be with thee. You're in that covenant. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy son's wife, with thee. So question, why Noah? Why in verse 18 did God specifically name Noah? And say, by the way, you are, you are saved. You're going to be safe. Why with Noah? Did anybody answer that? Because Noah trusted God. You see, previously, that God, that, that Noah was lost and now saved. God is telling Noah, when this happens, you're going to be raised up. When this happens, again, you see that you're going to be raised up. But with thee will I establish my covenant. So why Noah and no one else? Well, look previous in the verse 7. And again, you have to be saved before the Lord returns for him to call you up. Noah was saved before the floods happened. In verse 7, when you go up a, a couple of verses... So why a covenant was established Noah? Why was he saved? In verse 7, And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made, made them. What does Noah do in the very next verse? He repents. He trusted that God, listen, Noah didn't know he was going to be saved when God first said this. He believed that it was going to happen. But in verse 8, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. To be found, you've got to recognize that you're lost. Noah believed that God was going to destroy the earth and everything in it. Listen, the Lord is going to return. And there will be some left behind. 
But those who trust, those who believe, God has a covenant with you through the blood of Jesus. As soon as the Lord said this, he believed what God was saying. And it says that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Lord, I believe it. I believe you're going to do exactly what you say. Lord, I'm lost. For those that are lost, you ought to be concerned. Because Noah realized right then and there, he was one that hasn't repented yet. And boy, it got a hold of him. Wait a minute, Lord. Let me get things right first. For those that are lost, there is a time coming that we do not know the hour. It could happen now, it could happen at this. It's going to happen. And those that are left behind, you will experience no other tribulation than it will that the earth has ever seen. First and foremost, it's going to be full of darkness one day. Chaos. A world without God. So Noah got right with God. He believed the word of God that the world, the darkness, was going to be destroyed. God said, I'm destroying it, uh, Noah. And right away, Noah accepted the word of God. Noah accepted the words of God. The very word. And we understand that the word of God is Christ. Do you believe what God says? Do you believe what Jesus is saying to the disciples? I am returning. Amen. And by the way, those that don't receive me, those who don't confess, will be left behind. But with, these, uh, with thee I will establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy son's wife's with thee. And another light bulb went off as I was studying the Ark of the Covenant, or Noah's Ark, excuse me. People saw Noah's salvation. Not because of Noah, but what he trusted God to do. The Ark, remember, is a covenant. The Ark is salvation. People seeing Noah's salvation through what he believed God would do. And the more Noah did, the more as the boat, if you will, was being put together, the more they seen. The more you do for God, the more people will see. You don't even have to explain it to them. They see it. Noah was just busy doing what God told him to do. And as he was building uh, another block of wood, uh, another yard, I don't know how many, uh, the exact feet it does give, but it was a pretty large boat when he got done. Which means a lot of people seen. As Noah was doing things for God, people were looking and seeing. As you do things for God, people will see. And by the way, when the Ark of the Covenant was being built, it was God who was drawing things to it. Amen. God is the one that draws man to salvation. Amen. So as Noah was doing this, it was being drawn. It's like, uh, again, think of light. I don't know if they sell anymore. People have the zappers. But man, light draws things to it. The bigger light, the bigger the zapper. The more you do things for God, and, and listen, not for yourself. Noah was doing things that God told him to do. And when you specifically do what God tells you to do, the more you do it, the more people see it. Can you imagine if he stopped building it? People couldn't see it. People seeing salvation through Noah, through the word of God. People will see your salvation through you when you do the word of God. 
Number one, if you're in a covenant with God, with Christ, you're connected with him. Are you connected with Christ? Are you one that are doing things right? And the more you do for Christ, the more your light that God has in you is being shown. As we stand together.